This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at NokianTires.com slash EV. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me in a back alley here in San Diego where I've just had the onboard charger of my Nissan Leaf replaced here at QC Charge. And I actually ran into this guy, a really amazing guy, uh, this past weekend, and he is driving his Tesla Roadster around the world. And then I found out that his name is Rafael de Mestre. I actually have been following him online. I put two and two together. I'm like, ah, you're the guy who drives electric cars around the world. He's probably the only guy who drives more electric miles than we do. I mean, just always on the road and driving across multiple continents. This time he's going around the world for his second go in this Tesla Roadster. It's on European Romanian plates. He's visiting the US. It just had the R80 battery pack upgrade. I want to talk to him about some of his plans for the around the world trips coming in the future, what it's been like so far. And it's just always an epic day when we get to meet up with other EV road trippers like ourselves. But this is on a whole nother level. This makes out of spec motoring look so lame. Rafael is the real OG driving around the world. Let's chat with him, talk all about his car, his adventures, and then, of course, it sounds like there might be an opportunity for us and you guys to get involved in the next run. So we got a lot to learn today. So here's Raphael and his Roadster. Welcome to YouTube and thank you so much for uh, willing to share your story with us. Thank you for you for promoting me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so you've now driven around the world multiple times. Um, and this Roadster is on its second journey, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So, the only car which ever drove twice around the world, I think. So. Oh, wow, pretty amazing. And it's also amazing that you're doing fully electric in a car that was designed 20 years ago, 15 years ago, something like this. What? Wh why are you so crazy? <laughs> what makes you want to do this? Well, uh, for me, this is a solution for a lot of problems and most of the people are not aware about it. And I just want to convince people to to change to an electric car. And it's a lot of fun. And it, you don't have to have range anxiety driving 25,000 kilometers. Now on the next one, 30,000 miles. So I think it's enough range. Yeah, totally. And what I think is interesting is you actually don't have any DC fast charging capability on this particular car. So can you talk a little bit about how you would find chargers you know, in the US and Europe, I think our audience, yeah, you can plug into campgrounds, you could plug in at hotel destination chargers, but what's it like when you're in China or Kazakhstan where there's not much electric infrastructure? Is it difficult to find power in remote places? Well, electric infrastructure is internationally since the 19th century and everywhere it, it's a standard. So everyone knows what, which is a ground, which wire is a phase, and if you go around the world, you just show the colors of the faces and everyone knows how to plug the car. So it's just very normal and the whole infrastructure is already there. The only thing what changes from 2012, when I just plug from plug to plug to plug, from hotel to hotel, to now is that now you have charging stations. These charging stations are accelerating your way of traveling so you can charge faster in between. But if you have enough range, you don't care. So this car has 400 miles of range. So I'm, I'm not waiting for, they say it's charging so slow in AC. I'm not waiting. I'm just, now I plugged in and later I'm driving. I will drive 400 miles. I already drove about 80 miles today. And then I will sleep in a hotel. And in the morning when I'm waking up, the car is charged full. So I'm even faster than with a gas car. It's amazing. I want to actually, before we get into some of your previous adventures, because you've gone around the world in 2012, you mentioned, you've also been around the world in your Tesla Model S uh, with air suspension and much more comfortable, roomier yeah. car. So why are you doing this again in the Roadster? And tell us about this car, because my understanding is this was in a pretty serious accident and it was rebuilt. And what's the story on the car? 
Well, this car I um, I bought 2010 and I got it 2011 in March. And this car is my dream. So I was, when I was a child, I was asking the grown up people why the cars are stinking so much. And if the old cars will stink, someday the whole world will stink. And the grown up says, no, this will dissolve and it's so much air on globe. So I, I was, I fell in love in electric cars with these bumper cars. And it took 40 years uh, when someone sent me the link, teslamotors.com. And this looks like a bumper car, which is a little bit longer. And I just, well, I already was in love in this car. <laughs> so I took this car, it was just, you know, you're dreaming your whole life of something and you think this will never happen. And it happens after 40 years, it happens. You are simply speechless. You are so happy. And the whole world is not sharing your happiness. They don't understand. They are, they are saying, this is a toy. I'm in my love crisis. All these crisis things, they, they don't understand that this is a solution, something new. So people are having fear also to change. Yes, they have their cars. What about if you run, run out of battery somewhere? So my question is, what about if you are drive, driving with a gas car in Kazakhstan and route out of gas? Yeah, it's the same thing. No, it's worse. <laughs> well, you, I heard some stories last night. We were at the EV Learning Center, and you were telling me that um, because the high power plug is very common, this red three phase connection, which every I think our audience all knows this connection. We've charged on many things in Europe with this, that this can supply a 32 amp three phase to your vehicle. Yeah. So um, every tire shop you were, say, you were saying had this high power connection and there was, because the roads are so bad and people use their tires so much, you were actually able to charge at tire shops. Yeah, and the people are saying, what, uh, what if you don't find a place to charge? And then I asked, what if you don't find a petrol station? And then uh, I tried to open the eyes. Every petrol station is an electric car charging station. Every pedal is put into the gas in the into the car with electric pumps. So every gas station has electricity. Every hotel has electricity, but no hotel gives you gas. So I have <laughs> much more possibilities to charge the car. I totally agree. I mean, you sound like how we've been saying for years in the US. I mean, uh, just uh, maybe two years ago, we rode electric motorcycles across Montana, which was maybe, I think we did 1200 miles, nothing like what you were doing, but you know, no chargers anywhere. And we had zero problems getting across. We would either, you know, knock on doors or find campgrounds and electricity is everywhere. The infrastructure is completely built out. Now, on the flip side, you may not find 350 kilowatt chargers everywhere, but you just stay overnight and you drive 400 miles. And if you have some extra time, it's totally doable. Yeah, and the people are saying, ah, oh, this uh, plugging on a normal uh, regular plug is taking 36 hours. Yes, it takes 36 hours, but you are not silly to charge 36 hours on a normal plug. A normal plug is just an emergency. So if you don't, if you run out of battery, you search a restaurant, you plug in on the, on the, on the plug, you eat two hours, after two hours you will get 10, 20 miles, whatever, and then you reach the final destination where you can charge faster. That's right. It's always, you know, just the minimum amount of time you can spend at the slowest charger to get to high power infrastructure. Now, tell me a little bit about your Roadster here. This is, what year is this car? I, I got it on 12th of March, 2011. Okay. And uh, it's a Tesla Roadster 2.5. So the newest version of, of uh, Tesla Roadster. Yep. It has uh, the normal motor. So it doesn't have the sports motor, which is 0 0.2 seconds faster than this one for me. When they asked me, do you want to have for 10,000 euros more 0 0.2 seconds? I said, I never drove a car with the acceleration from zero to 60 in 3.9. <laughs> yeah. So this is enough. I don't care about 3.7. <laughs> sure, sure. 
and it's just such a fun car it's like a rocket so if it starts it's going like uh like an airplane <laughs> yeah i even have a story when i was in an airplane and i fall asleep and then the airplane started to lift off I wake up and I got a shock. Oh, I'm driving and I was searching for the steering wheel. <laughs> I said, ah, okay, because it was exactly the same feeling like taking off. Amazing, amazing. So how many kilometers are on this car now? It's 140,000, okay. uh, 10,000 I just drove this wow. month. <laughs> amazing. So almost 100,000 miles roughly. It, almost it will, it will have very soon 100,000 miles and it, it's it's not much for, for me. So yeah. I have on my Model S 371,000 <laughs> miles uh, and it's because it was in a, in a museum. So after going around the world, this is the first car ever electric production car who drove around the world. And they wanted to have it in the museum. They got it there, they bricked the battery and i got it back now after six years and put a new battery so six years it did not drive so so they just basically didn't charge it didn't keep it topped up and so the battery hit low voltage and it was dead yeah i trained the stuff and in the contract was also stated that the trained stuff has to care about this but the stuff it changed after six months and they didn't hand over correctly oh. and then they but they paid for the new battery no they didn't oh. want you know what they said on Losu? Uh, it's normal that the battery is breaking after six years. What? Then I say, what? Yeah, also painting is degradating in the museum and they're not paying for, for this kind of damages. And oh, the wow. insurance company said, yeah, yeah, it's like this. Wow. And I said, well, no. And in the end, we agreed that they pay 50%. Okay. And well, they paid 50% of the old battery. Oh, not the R80 paid, upgrade. No, the new battery. So I have about 25% paid from the model, from the. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the lawyer also got his part. Yeah, yeah. So it's oh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. Could we open up the, uh, the trunk here so we can show what the um, battery pack looks like here? So this is the brand new, what is the battery capacity of this new battery pack? 75 kilowatts. Okay, is that usable capacity? Uh, they say it's uh, something about 72 usable. Okay. But it's about 20 kilowatts more than uh, the original. Okay. And imagine that only 20 kilowatts doubles the range. Amazing because they, they didn't put more weight on it. It's just more battery density. Yeah. And this is exactly what I'm saying to all the people. The car has no range and say, come on, this is an AT computer or XT computer. This is the first computer. So what speed do you have? I, I know the people would say Pentium is the more fastest computer. It's <laughs> not possibly. And then someone said, okay, then we make dual core, quad core, right. 16 core. So. We are just in the beginning and blocking this evolution is simply stupid. I'm pretty sure that someday in the cell, they will get three, triple, four times more uh, energy. Right. And then the cars will be much more lighter. They will be much more cheaper and they will have much more range. So, so you've upgraded the Roadster now with, so currently it has a brand new 75 kilowatt hour yeah. battery pack, roughly. They call it the R80 upgrade. Yeah and you have level two charging. Yeah. Uh, is it 22 kilowatt charging in Europe or 11 or what do you get out of it? Uh, no, this car is first generation American style. So it's oh. one phase charger. Only single phase charging. So I cannot, in Germany, I cannot get the 22 kilowatts. So the maximum you can charge this is 70 amp. Multiplied with 240, it's about 14, 15 kilowatt maximum. Yes and the speed. But still 70 amps is quite a bit. And do you ever find the 80 amp connections here in the US where you can do 70? Well, luckily, uh, well, 2012, I went simply to the homes of Tesla Roadster owners and they had this 70 amp high power connector, which was only built by Clipper Creek yes. for Tesla Roadsters. Uh, I've used no. some of those in Germany and seen them. And uh, like yeah. in Motor World and Stuttgart, they have this. Yeah. And you got acquainted with all the Tesla Roadster drivers I, in the world. I can imagine. So I have a lot of network of nice uh, Tesla Roadster drivers. And if you meet again, you are 
uh, well, if you meet the first time, you get immediately friends, and if you meet again, it's a big party. And I'm happy that now, I, uh, with the help of Henry Sharp, who, uh, who did this adapter, which I got borrowed from Gruber Motor Company, I can charge now on here on this state on destination chargers. And you know how many thousands of destination chargers are worldwide? All over the place. And a lot of destination chargers have 70 or 80 amp. So I even can then like a high power, I can charge there on, in a hotel in, uh, and then I'm full in five hours. So it's, honestly, it's too fast. I have to charge, I yes. have to sleep more. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. No, it's really a, a fantastic um, story of what you've been able to do with this car and traveling. So where have you taken this car? What countries has it been in? You said something like 30 countries or something crazy. It will be. Okay. So uh, actually it has been here. I have the flex on the side. Oh, okay. It, uh, it crossed 2012, Spain, France, Switzerland, Germany, America, China, Kazakhstan, Russia, Ukraine. So there was no war there. Right. Romania, um, Hungary and Austria, and then back to, to Spain. So it was just the shortcut. And uh, next time we will make uh, a Guinness Book record. So we will drive, try to drive um, 40,000 kilometers in 80 days. So 500 kilometers per day uh average and we will make like zigzag driving oh wow and then we will include 35 uh, countries and i'm now uh, on the way to check the route if it's okay for the teams where to stay so everyone who has a stay welcome to say to me uh, come here it's super cool place here uh i'm i appreciate yeah, open every... to suggestions yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amazing appreciation everyone who's saying come to this place to my company to whatever uh, we promote and the company um, if uh, if they want to and I will try to to include 35 uh, countries so if, if someone has a product a sustainable product I think it will be perfect to come with us we, we promote this in 35 countries in the world and make it visible. Amazing. So you're putting together the next trip with uh, a bunch of different people, teams. There's a guy bringing his family who's from the Czech Republic. You have other drivers all driving electric, mostly Tesla uh, at this point, just because the supercharger network is amazing. So you can actually cover distance. And I imagine you're not going to be taking the Roadster on that one. You'll take the Model S. Is that yeah. the plan? Yeah, because I'm I'm the the car who has to have some gimmicks for the other teams. If they fail, I have to have a spare uh, charging station, a spare from everything, and you cannot have here anything. Right, spare. yeah, I there's no three, room. Three t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's interesting is you're putting together a rally, if you will, or a drive, an event, where you're gonna be taking people around the entire world in their electric cars, and they can sign up to join or to sponsor you. Yeah. Or even to join on a particular area, right? They can yeah. join for a leg or two. Yeah, yeah. there are some when uh, uh, last week I've been in Canada and the Canadian, they were excited to make a long trip. So they are also got, kind of guys that have a Tesla and they drive from Toronto to, to, to Ontario and back and they're not making really even they're not going to Halifax. Right. They say, oh, all this long distance. <laughs> And I motivated two teams and they will uh, join from Halifax to San Diego. So wonderful. First time they really will see this continent in full with all the climate zones and the beauty of the nature. Yeah, I've been lucky enough to do that drive and it's just amazing. We live in one of the best places for driving, as you know. We have amazing roads, great infrastructure, beautiful scenery. Um, I've also had the lucky opportunity to spend a lot of time driving all over Europe in electric vehicles, but I still have never driven around Asia in an electric vehicle. We're supposed to be going to China soon, and I definitely haven't done it in a singular vehicle. So can you tell me how it works for shipping the vehicle, the importing, the you know, does it have to be at a certain state of charge when you fly it or put it on a boat or how do you actually get it from place to place? Yeah, the, the issue is not the charging. The issue is the border crossing in the transport. This is the issue of this project. 
and I tried to make it as emission free as possible. So the first times I did it, it was as fast as possible because I wanted to be the first man in the world to, to do this, overtaking the Mitsubishi Aimee, who also tried to do this. Okay. But I won. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, now I'm trying to make it with ships, and I even managed to transport this car with a sailing ship. And I'm very, Sorry, no combustion. Yeah, so I'm very happy that I can announce that this is possible, and uh, I want to ask every car, uh, every car manufacturer, including Tesla and Rivian or whatever, who are transporting sustainable products, so electric cars, to Europe, that they please, they have also the option to have like a green transport electric uh -huh. car so that a European can choose. I buy an electric car or I buy a green transport electric car and they are then transported by sailing ships, reducing the emission drastically. You know that 15 container ships of the world are polluting the world more than all cars together. Of course. So we have really to, to, to take a look on this and try to change this too. And m my intention is to uh, to push this industry, to help this industry to grow. There are now two ships which are working on a, uh, two times a year. They're going America, uh, Europe and so on. And there are other which are about to be built. One in France, which has use of U European funds. One in, uh, uh, in Denmark, which should they say they, they can even transport 100 cars. So my ship could only transport one roadster, even not a Model S. Wow, okay. So it was a tiny Very ship. small one, yeah. So uh, it has to be more huge like the normal container ships, yes. like an electric propulsion via, um, via wind and with electric motor and battery so that they can navigate in the harbors yep. emission free and um, they can move um, my ship uh, uh, took six weeks to transport across the atlantic yeah mm -hmm. two weeks to cross the atlantic and four weeks to get winds to come to miami oh, really and because they didn't have a propulsion so they could not move to a wind zone oh so they so were just stuck <laughs> so yeah you are stuck so like in the old um, medieval um, uh, days so you need this kind of propulsion to sh to shift the then you have a map where you can see everywhere there is wind but i'm an, on a no wind zone so they just move a little bit and then they can continue so it's amazing how you're involved uh not only promoting tesla promoting electric vehicles and you know everything that these vehicles can do which i'm sure you've blown the minds of everyone watching this video including myself got me really inspired to get back out and do more driving which is my favorite thing to do and i'm lucky enough i've done more than most but not nearly as much as you but you're also pushing for a global change to sustainable it doesn't matter what it sounds like even sustainable shipping is a big topic and this is really interesting something we'd like to cover a little bit more on our side because at the end of the day at least from my perspective i love cars i love driving i love adventure but i want to do it with the least amount of impact possible exactly i was also thinking going around the world a long time ago uh, but with a gas car for me it didn't make a sense Sure. And with an electric car, it makes double sense and make it international. It makes even three times change uh, uh, sense because you are connecting nations. So I had a Team America, Team China, which now are the best friends. So uh, we can work together and pollution is an international matter. So what, what uh, America or the world has from Norway has only electric cars. Yes. And we filmed a lot in Norway. Our audience is familiar. It doesn't help. Right. It, it helps Norway a bit and the rest of the world is still having an issue. Of course. So we have to copy Norway. We have to get the people uh, together to work together to think about inter international relationships, how to solve it. And if a ship, for instance, is crossing the ocean, it's crossing a lot of different countries. So. The countries could make uh, sponsorship uh, on electric cars, uh, on electric ships. So uh, I think there we are just in the start of a big international cooperation, which is possible. And the electric car is just a key. 
That's right. Absolutely. So back to the car, I just want to take our viewers on a quick situation. I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that in Germany, you were involved in an accident, a frontal collision with this vehicle. And it seems like, you know, something our audience, I think, understands, and I know you know as well, Tesla doesn't pay anyone to really promote their stuff. That's a zero dollar. But when you're driving a Roadster around the world, there are certain people in the company that think it's really cool. So they were able to prioritize and get you back on the road very quickly. Is this that same vehicle that was in the accident? This is the one and only which went around the world, had the accident and was repaired in five days from a total crash. So the, um, the insurance company, they said, we will not repair it. It's too much. Oh, they wanted to total it. They said, you will get another one. And I talked to, uh, to, to Tesla, say, please, please, please. And Tesla went to the insurance company and say, either we repair this or you will not have any contract anymore. Oh, interesting. And then they gave them another Tesla Roadster for customer like contract. And then the insurance says, OK, <laughs> yep. we repair. Amazing. It was it was much more uh, more expensive than the value in these times. But now, you know, the value has gone it's, way up. It's uh, it was worth to to repair. And if yeah. you if you look inside the car and the value of this particular one is just priceless because of everything that it's been able to go through. Yeah, you know, one was already um, in Christie's sold by one million. Yes. So, you know, this is more. <laughs> <laughs> this is a more than one million dollar car. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So it and it looks pretty good under here, but this was all smashed in. Yeah. Crazy, huge yeah. hit. And if you if you look online on adedays.com slash Genesis, you will yeah. see the pictures of the car, how destroyed it was. I'll include it here and, in the video. And uh, you will see here the two metal panels which are here, which are like very stiff, like holding a bridge. And if you crash with this to another car, you destroy simply the other car. Of course, you have the big crash structure here. So it destroyed here the, the whole, uh, let's say, easy to break parts like AC and so on. Yeah. But the frame kept 100% untouched. Amazing. So it was even not torqued. And I had no, nothing. No bruises, no nothing. No bruises, no nothing. Amazing. Such I just a safe car. And I was totally upset and say, oh, shit, game over. Yep. And um, then Tesla said, no, if you are not hurt, it will be continuous. Amazing. And they gave me power to continue. That is so cool. And so um, I think one last final question about your Roadster is this vehicle, um, from a charging perspective, does not have DC charging. And so there are kits out there, specifically ones made here, that have DC charging. But you and I were talking yesterday a little bit about it. Because you have the brand new battery pack, you have this warranty that will be void if you do have this DC charging. Is this the reason you don't want to add DC charging? No. Okay. The reason why I didn't add it is was that uh, Google Motors was worried. OK, yeah. Uh, I don't care, honestly, right. about you warranty just... in an electric car. <laughs> nice. I love this. If you drive an electric car, 300,000 miles and then the motor is breaking. Ah, yeah, gone. whatever. Yeah. All of my gas cars I broke after 100,000, 150,000. No, no gas car survived 200,000 kilometers. <laughs> wow. Amazing. I destroyed all motors because what the people just forget about, forgetting uh, I have to make service, oil change, blah, blah, blah. They forget that an old gas car you cannot push anymore. Which which gas car with 200,000 miles you can go to a racetrack? Yeah, no, this almost is going nothing. To racetracks. Yeah. My Model S is going to racetracks, trying to beat with his old, 10 years old, brand new Porsches. So this is a <laughs> totally different t technology. And who cares if the car is after 300,000 miles where I normally had, had to board two gas cars. Right. And speaking about statistics and universities and uh, comparing and sustainable of electric cars who is comparing one electric car with two gas cars right right In all statistics you stop argumenting yes 
because this lifetime of this is much more. It's amazing. We also have a mutual friend who has a million miles on his Tesla Model S in Germany. Yeah. And we'll be making a video with him very soon because it's just incredible, the, the, the range and the uh, ability to handle these things. So I hope, I mean, I hope for your sake that you put DC charging on this one day. I'm in, no, I love Gruber, I love these guys, I, I have no relation, but. With QC charge? Yes. Uh, on the Tesla takeover? Yes. And the boss said that he's committing that he will develop a new charger for me. Okay. Uh, uh, CCS charger. Oh, way better than Chatamo. And CCS is European standard. So yes. if I could charge CCS on this car, 50 kilowatts per hour, which charged in two hours full. Yes. This is, I could uh, join competitions and beat all the others. Yeah, absolutely. Because this is so, so energy efficient. Yeah. What, yeah. Uh, what kind of efficiency do you get out of the Roadster? Well, if you are if you are pushing it really hard, you get on the best efficiency of a Model Three. Okay. So if you are driving it carefully, you are going on even under ten kilowatts per hour uh, per one hundred kilometers. Wow! So a hundred watt hour per kilometer is so you when get, you're being really efficient. Yeah, and and we are not talking about driving downhill. So right. That's amazing. But also the car is like, here's a Tesla Model S. This is my car as an example. It's almost two or three of your roadsters stacked up uh, in terms of height. But that's amazing how efficient this car is. Yeah, and I wanted to know after I got it, how much uh, miles can I drive with it? So I said, okay, today I will take the risk, charge full, and let's see how far I can go. And after you know if you have a car which you have to charge every 250 300 kilometers your body after 250 and 300 kilometers says okay peace stop yeah i'm tired so after 250 300 kilometers i was tired and it said continue continue yeah. i said whoa and then 400 kilometers 500 kilometers 600 kilometers wow. and i said wow I was really super tired. Yeah. And after 630, 37 kilometers, which is about four, 397 miles. Yep. Uh, I went to a charger because I, I said, okay, no. And there was, there was some miles left. So wow. I can, I can really confirm that you can drive with a brand new battery, 400 miles, which is double from what I got before. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, the way you use your electric car is very similar to ours. It's don't let the car control you. We were talking about you own the car. It should enhance your life. Full charge it when you need it, run it low when you need it, drive it hard on the track when you want to have fun. And then for storage, leave it in the middle somewhere, you know, be good to it when you can, but don't let it control you. Yeah, this is a message to everyone with the with the digital world. A lot of people are mutating to robots. If you call a call center, you think you are talking with a robot because they are just following some rules the machines are giving you. Right. So don't do this. Yes. We are the humans. The machines are our slaves. Yes. And this will never ever change. It should never change. Yes. If I want to go from A to B this machine has to do it like i want <laughs> yes. i don't want to adapt my life to only charge 80 percent or 20 percent if i want to have long then i want to charge full and right. i have to say from my experience i have to contradict to all these laboratory tests okay yeah uh, for me i have the feeling that you have to treat the battery like a human being like more sometimes thrill it sometimes go to 100 sometimes make it totally empty yep. and sometimes not so i'm not i'm not charging it I'm always full right so if i don't need it i don't charge it full that's Why the best I? thing is charge up so, just for what you need so, and if you have a normal life you will now and then when you're going to holiday you will charge it full and if you go to the office you will not charge it full so this is the way how to treat the machine. 100%. I think this is better and this is not to be proven in the laboratory. Right. You can only prove it in, in the community. 
Right. And we've seen it before. I mean, I've owned electric cars for a long time and then I know you've owned them as well. We have electric cars with very high mileage and we full charge them before trips and we drain them to zero when we're driving and we heavily DC fast charge our cars because we're always traveling under time. And the degradation has been very minimal. And I feel like we're pretty hard on this car. For example, this Model S has only 15,000 miles, but maybe 14,000 of them has been supercharging. You know, it's just always on the road going places and it's still relatively new, but that's how we use them. And then when it sits at home, I charge it to 50% and it sits for a month. And regarding degradation, uh, we are talking about five or 8,000 small cells. And it's obvious that some cells are not so good like the others. Right. So my Model S now, uh, uh, the battery did not work anymore. Tesla said, okay, we will exchange it. It's $20,000. And because I'm known, I I, uh, I was contacted. I heard about your battery breaks. I can repair it. Yes. And there are companies like Rubo Motors or others, which can, uh, which have algorithm how to find the the bad cells. That's right. And, and then they repair just change three. You may. This is sustainable. You just three triple A or double A cells. You just exchange, and then you have a working and uh, I have now uh, it's named electric five Europe it's a, a Belgium uh, company okay and they even they first of all it's not 20,000 so if you pay it's two and a half thousand oh wow uh, second it is uh, having a warranty so he gives me warranty for 40,000 kilometers and I oh, say wow oh that's a cool that's a cool deal so then let's say uh, you repair it and I drive afterwards around the world with this. So for me, this <laughs> so around is the world. The, nice, the nice message that I'm driving with a car who has 371 miles driven, which has a repaired battery around the world and it will work. It's amazing. I mean, the way to keep these cars on the road is this this aftermarket repair process is just starting. And that's actually why we're here at QC Charge is repairing my old Nissan Leaf because just one component. I mean, the guy who had it before was going to throw the car away. He didn't. He's, I can't use it. But we just came here. We exchanged a part in one hour. And now it's perfect. Back to new again. It's amazing how you can keep these cars running. And I can't thank you enough for promoting electric, of course, but doing it in a really cool way. Um, you are literally doing what everyone wants to do, which is traveling, meeting people in different cultures and different places of the planet. Something I'd love to join you on an adventure one day where we go together somewhere could be really fun. And um, we'll definitely have to meet up on a leg or two of this next trip. I unfortunately can't take 80 days off from filming, but uh, it would be pretty epic to do some legs with you. Well, in total, it's three legs. So you have uh, two weeks of leg on um, Europe. Then you have pause because the cars are transported. Yep. And then you have about one month in America. And then you have again one month pause to transport to uh, China. And then you have a long leg. So people which say, OK, I don't have time to have nonstop. They can just take one of these legs or part of these legs or uh, going back to business in the in the in the right, in transport the... Uh, time. Yeah. And everyone is welcome to follow me uh, on ATE days. You can see my car uh, location live, the GPS. Yeah. So in one month, you will see me crossing China and Kazakhstan and you will see all the photos where I will be in 2024. I'm I'm uh, excited to meet more people to drive together in legs. The more, the better. I was really delighted uh, when I was on the Tesla takeover. First time in my life, I was standing in a jam caused by Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, there were so many Teslas there. I was standing uh, for uh, 50 minutes. Yeah, it was in traffic. It was really, I wasn't. I was really more delighted than, than angry. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Well, congratulations on all your success, and I wish you the best of luck for your 2024 leg. ADEdays.com is where our audience can go and sign up and either sponsor it and contribute to the efforts, or even what I would hope they would do, you know, pack up the luggage in the car and join you for a leg to or around the world, because that is such a unique opportunity. It's such a cool story. We need to come up with a way where we can film your 2024 journey because I'd like to make a, a video
video of this yeah. or a video series of your around the world trip. I think it'd be amazing. So we uh, will be back on YouTube together again. Thank you so much Thank for taking the time. That was amazing. And I guess we're charging up the roadster here and you are off to Northern California now. So the miles never stop coming. Thank you, Raphael. And thanks to the viewers. We'll see you on another video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.